But I wanted to riff on that empathy off the top. You know, on so many levels, there uh, seems to be a lack of it. And certainly in the case of this, boy, dare I call her a nurse out there in Woodstock in London? You follow the story? And uh, it had everybody aghast back in the fall when she was charged. This licensed nurse nurse uh, with eight counts of first-degree murder, Elizabeth Wetlaufer. Well, the cops, the OPP, just laid six new charges against her before she was due in court earlier this morning in Woodstock. And uh, it's really a horrific story. And I know this is the whole process that's going to play out, but it's already led to a lot of people questioning the quality of care in some of these homes and hospices and hospitals. And uh, I'm quite concerned about that myself, to be honest with you, because I've seen it firsthand. Up, up close and personal with my own aged parents and my mom, who was put in that very vulnerable position of having to fall back on the care of what you hope are uh, empathetic professionals. But that may not always be the case. And uh, so I wanted to start with that on this Friday edition. Cover off one of these stories that's very, very heartrending. And uh, I think it gets us all where we live. If you've got any, well, it doesn't even have to be somebody with aged relatives, parents, friends, loved ones, because, you know, it's just a matter of time before we, we perhaps find ourselves in that same situation. And you want to be fairly confident that you're in the hands of people who are empathetic and that you can trust and very professional. Because in the case of this uh, wet lawfer, you know, the victims' families, uh, they're beside themselves, and understandably so. And uh, they have said things on the record, you know, that uh, we can certainly appreciate. But there's even, uh, I guess, an instance where one of the families uh, of a victim who uh, died back in, uh, I think it's 2007, if the story is, uh, or 2014, Arpad Horvath, uh, his family is now suing civilly, as I understand it. And uh, the law firm of Diamond and Diamond is handling that case. The attorney for the family of Arpad Horvath is Sandra Ziskind, and she's joined us on the line this afternoon here, afternoon here on The Oakley Show at Talk Radio, AM 640. Sandra, good to have you on the program. Hello. Hi, John. Thanks for having me on. All right. So this is a story that's transfixed everybody, but now it's interesting because we know the criminal charges, a fresh bevy, have been laid today. Uh, I'm guessing yours is a civil suit, though. So mine's a civil suit. I represent also the Millard family who lost their mother tragically as well. So we have two families now. Uh, the idea being basically that the families want some answers. You know, criminal charges are good for her, and and they'll put her where she needs to be, which is in jail. Um, but they want some answers also from the nursing home. What did the nursing home know? What did they not know? What did, did they fail to know or turn a blind eye to? And where did sort of the breakdown happen that their family members died? Well, how can you ascertain that? How would you go about that? So that's part of the investigation. When you start a civil lawsuit, you're entitled to a bunch of documentary evidence. Eventually, I'll get also, once the criminal disp the disposition of the criminal case is done, we'll get the whole criminal file as well and see what our very competent police have been able to discern from the case. And we'll be able to see, was the ball dropped? Did they know about this? Did the nursing home before this nursing home no, no. Uh, my understanding is she was at several nursing homes. Did somebody else suspect it, and did everyone just keep their mouth shut? I mean, this is a big problem, and we need to know what exactly occurred here. I would say just in the general public's interest, and uh, perhaps as a preemptive measure going down the road further along here, uh, everybody, it stands everybody uh, in their interest to know how these things do play out. But that sounds like a pretty laborious task. You're going to have to do a lot of investigating and digging on this front, aren't you? There's no question. My my uh, my job is very glamorous on TV, but in real life, it usually is laborious and difficult. So it's nothing new to me, but this is an important issue. And it's important that we do it. And I'm seeing, you know, I can speak colloquially about it. We see a rise in people calling us about elder abuse and elder um, neglect in homes. I'm seeing it more and more often. And oftentimes lawyers never took it on because the unfortunately the elderly are not valued with a high monetary uh, value in our court system. So lawyers are always loath to carry those on. We've made it a point at our firm to take on those type of cases 
Because exactly like you said, with an aging baby boomer population, we're all going to end up there. I, you know, I, you know, unless we're, we have some sort of miracle, <laughs> most of us will end up in a nursing home or need some sort of palliative care. And we need to take care of our most vulnerable in society, which is a growing elderly population. Sandra Ziskin's with us, Diamond and Diamond, the attorneys that are following up on this case civilly and uh, suing on behalf of the family of Arpad Horvath, who was one of the victims of this nurse, uh, Elizabeth Wetlofer, and the story that we're uh, becoming more and more familiar with, as horrific as it is. Did they contact you, the family here, uh, specifically contact you, Sandra? Yes, they did. The both families contacted us specifically and asked us to get involved because they felt they needed an advocate on their behalf to get some more answers beyond the criminal beyond now, the criminal prosecution. Now, do you handle this case concurrent to the criminal case or wait for that one to be finished? So it, will, it, it depends because we only have a two-year limitation um, in which to get this going. So it depends how long this case is going to be. I, my, I was in the courtroom myself today, um, and my concern is they just added a six other charges. I don't know what else they're uncovering there. So who knows how many more charges are down coming down the pipeline. So until we see the light of day of a trial, it may be quite a while. So we may have to do it before. We may have to do it after. Are you seeking monetary damages? We are, but again, the the money is the money is secondary to the situation. I know the families that I represent; they don't really care so much about the money. They care more about finding answers, and I think that's that's what it is. But unfortunately, in our system, the only way to proceed with a civil lawsuit, the only way to quantify damages, is in a monetary amount, and it's crass. But and there's no real good way to put money a money value on a loved one dying. But that's how we do it in the system. What is the figure? We don't have a figure as of yet. Um, I, I've been contacted recently by some more families, so we're going to see how many families will be involved in this big, what looks like it's going to be a big uh, lawsuit, and then we'll be able to be, better quantify. Are we talking about a class action? There won't be a class action because there's not thousands. I, I hope, uh, God help not, yeah. uh, there's like hundreds or thousands of people. With, that's more appropriate for a class action. It looks like there's a specified group of people, so it's not really appropriate for class action, but um, who knows? You never can tell. And who's named in the suit specifically? I mean, uh, Elizabeth Wetlofer is facing criminal charges and potentially, I guess, uh, could be named in your civil suit. But you mentioned earlier the nursing homes are right. uh, where you're directing your investigation for the most part, correct? Right. The nursing homes, and, and specifically, if there was nursing homes before, that knew or ought to have known and warned the proper authorities. Uh, the concern is, and we, again, we're, we're waiting for the investigation to unfold, the concern was that they may have let her go from previous nursing homes suspecting some odd behavior and nobody ever really taking the corrective measures to, um, to warn. And that's concerning. Now, again, we're waiting for the, the result of the investigation to confirm that. But if that's the case, then certainly those people are responsible as well. Now, obviously, it wouldn't be good for business if this were handed over to the government. But uh, do you think that this calls for some kind of provincial government oversight into the conduct in these nursing homes? Because as I said at the outset, and you uh, reiterated as well, you know, this is something that will impact all of us for the most part. Uh, we need to be 100% sure that we're being placed in the hands of caring professionals. Sure. So the government does have some inspection rights as of now. Um, there's a recently been legislation tabled, I think, in light of the situation where the government would have greater enforcement powers to go in and do what they need to do to shut something down or, or really get involved. I, I think we need to. I mean, look, if this was a daycare, uh, we wouldn't be even there wouldn't even be a discussion. Right. It would have been done already mm -hmm. right? because it's kids. But we're behind, we're really behind in getting this going for, for our, our vulnerable older people. And older people are arguably just as vulnerable as the youngest in society. They need our help and we can't just throw them by the wayside. Understood. So this is a two-year window in which you have to uh, initiate the whole process. When do you see the first steps actually playing out then? So we're, we're conducting our investigation. I, I probably will have a statement of claim good to go in about six to eight months. All right, six to eight months. Well, we're all watching with interest, as I say. I think uh, many of us are stakeholders or could be potentially. And so uh, it's not only with keen interest, but also, uh, you know, having a vested interest in the outcome of this kind of uh, a civil suit. And uh, we hope you.
for the best anyway, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. Appreciate you joining Thanks, us. John, and I appreciate you shedding a light on this. It's important. Thank you so much. You've got it. Sandra Ziskin, again with Diamond and Diamond, attorney for the family of one of the victims and potentially more in this case, this horrific case out of Woodstock in London, Ontario, Elizabeth Wetlover. Four counts of attempted murder, two counts of aggravated assault, added to the eight charges of first-degree murder in the uh, demise of eight seniors in two long, long-term long care homes uh, that go back over a decade. It's really a horrific story, you know, but uh, as I just mentioned with uh, Susan Ziskin, these are the kinds of things that